So the market is just not going to right tap you on the shoulder and say, look, this is selling this done. We're going to go back higher or you know what? This is a blow off top. We're going to go back lower. Again, you have to always prepare for the worst case scenario and always be conscious that the other side of the market can really, really uh, push you away. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. Hope everybody's having a great start uh, to your weekend. You'll probably get the video somewhere around Saturday evening, Sunday morning. So hopefully everybody uh, is doing well. So let's talk about the market. Um, yeah, so... Here was a scoreboard towards uh, the end of the week, right? Uh, we had two days of pretty good rallying off the bottom of the ranges uh, on the Qs, on the SMHs, and a lot of the indexes. And despite the really big aggressive strength, and you can see here on Friday, uh, the Qs are up seven. I mean, this is a really, really uh, substantial move. And if you look at the scoreboard towards the end of the week, you'll see, you know, pretty muted, right? You had the S&P uh, and the Dow down over 1% for the week, despite uh, these really pretty aggressive 24-hour rallies. And the NASDAQ 100, the composite, uh, was down about 2.5% for the week, despite, again, this is despite this really big move off the bottom in continuation on Friday. And there is some really good news and bad news kind of situation in all of this. The good news is the market finally stabilized a little bit. When I say the market, when I mean the market, especially if you're a new viewer here, um, I'm talking about the NASDAQ 100. I trade uh, 90, you know, 95 percent. Uh, all technology names uh, pretty much represent the Nasdaq 100. Obviously, uh, affiliates as well. So when I talk about the market, I talk about the Nasdaq 100, the heavy tech uh, Nasdaq, not the Dow Jones Industrial Average that represent only uh, 30 stocks. So the market itself, the Qs, um, had about three weeks of selling into really good news. If you guys remember, uh, earnings, right? Everything was sold. Doesn't make a difference uh, what they said. Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, Google, uh, Tesla, Netflix, doesn't, didn't make a difference. Anything that came out, uh, good, bad, or indifferent was being sold, but especially good news. And we had that for about three weeks. And then the NASDAQ 100 did the worst thing possible. Okay, as the Dow was skying high, and you saw this really big disconnect uh, from technology into everything else, you know, especially uh, the you know, especially uh, the banks, the brokers, uh, the retail names did very, very good in the same period of time as technology was getting pulled. And then we started losing the 50-day moving average, which was very, very important because this is where the rally that started all the way back into the end of January, February, March. The end of March had this really majestic move and then came all the way in. And then we were threatening to lose this area where it broke out and then we lost it. For the next several days, we saw really, really aggressive selling. If you've been watching kind of the broadcast uh, just for the last three, four days, you know I've been sell bias, right? Sell bias on technology, not the market, but sell bias and technology. And when you look at names, for example, uh, like a Tesla had this marvelous, marvelous sell off this whole week, despite the strength of the market, you could turn around and you say, well, what is going to be the catalyst? What is going to be the next thing that's going to stabilize technology? Not just Tesla. I mean, you look at everything else and you look, uh, you look at the queues, right? Had this really, really big move and they actually closed uh, below this rising support for the first time in like forever, right? And you saw names like individual names like Amazon really get hit uh, and Netflix and all of them, right? Apple didn't make a difference which one it was. And the question was, well, what's going to be the catalyst to get this market to stop selling to kind of rebound again? And here's the greatest part about uh, the stock market. The stock market doesn't owe, owe any of us anything, right? Doesn't owe any of us uh, any explanation or why things are happening, why things are not happening, is it rational or is it irrational? Again, if you were having this conversation at the start of the pandemic in March 2020, nobody in their right mind would say, hey, by the way, we're only a stone throws away uh, from all-time highs, right? Irrational, didn't make sense. Again, another perfect example that the market doesn't owe us anything. It doesn't owe us any explanation. So we came into Thursday's session, if you guys remember Wednesday's video, I was 100% sell bias. And at one point, the Dow was up 500 points on Thursday, right? At 500 points on Thursday. And I kept on reiterating the point on uh, on, on the live webinar. I, I go, I can't find anything to buy. There's nothing to buy in technology. They're not rallying. And then finally, you saw these really big aggressive pulls 
uh, on Thursday's session. Despite the indexes being super strong, you saw Tesla getting ridiculously pulled. You saw Alibaba, it had quite a nice move on Alibaba. Uh, Alibaba came out earnings, got really pulled, and everything, it wasn't even just them, I mean, just literally everything technology was pulled. And you turn around and you say, well, well, well how is this possible? How, you know, how are these stocks so weak and the Dow is up 500 and even the NASDAQ composite as a whole is up 100 points? And you started saying to yourself, well, this has to follow through into Friday, right? This is why we play the game, right? This is why we always have an opinion. We always have our plan of action. We have our uh, sentiment check, everything lined up. But again, like I said a few minutes ago, the market doesn't have to do anything, right? The market doesn't have to do anything that you want it to be. You can plan for it. Uh, you can have an opinion. You can have your whole game plan play out for more selling. The market turns on a dime. And every, everything takes it with it. And Friday, we had this really aggressive rally, right? Everything rallied. Even uh, Tesla that was threatening two days in a row uh, below the 200-day moving average finally woke up towards the end of the day. And the NASDAQ composite and the NASDAQ 100 did something really, really good, right? Uh, they finally reclaimed the 50-day moving average after three full days being below it. And for a second... Uh, Wednesday and Thursday looked like we were, you know, a moonshot. We were, we were a magnet for that 312.50 level and never got there. And this is why we say random actions happen when you least expect it. And that's exactly what kind of happened, kind of going a little bit uh, further back. But that's exactly what happened towards the end of the fourth quarter uh, in 2009 when people set, started turning around and saying, well, when's this market ever going to go up? I mean, up again. We have the you know financial crisis. Everything's horrible. And then one day you woke up and then we had the bottom of the generational bull market back in 2009. So the market is just not going to right tap you on the shoulder and say, look, this is selling this done. We're going to go back higher. Or you know what? This is a blow off top. We're going to go back lower. Again, you have to always prepare for the worst case scenario and always be conscious that the other side of the market could really, really uh, push you away. And the good news for the bulls, right? was that the Qs reclaimed on the close uh, the 50-day moving average off that 326. We needed that close over the 326 to kind of for the bulls to get control. So this is very, very bullish. And if you have to, you know, if you go through your charts today uh, or this weekend, and again, every single trader, no matter how long they've been in the game, if you do so, you're going to kind of notice a bad news, good news, right? The good news is, yes, the bulls reclaimed uh, the 50-day moving average on the queues, that's super duper bullish. If the bad news is, is this. If you go through charts, and you go through a lot of charts, and I went through a bunch of NASDAQ 100 names, I went through the S&P 500, I went through the Russell, I went through the Dow Jones, I went through S&P, I, I, I put in a really, really uh, long, pretty good you know, charting session uh, this morning. And I noticed a lot of things, and I'm sure a lot of you guys who've putting in the time this weekend or are about to are gonna notice a, a bunch of the same things as well. Charts are not as good as the close on the NASDAQ 100. So for example, the NASDAQ 100, right, reclaimed the 50-day moving average, but you can see all these supply zones, right, guys? For all you guys who are joining in for the first time, again, I'm not a predictor of future events, okay? I don't know where Apple's gonna be a week from now, let alone five years from now, right? We can guess, we can try to predict, but again, it's not what it's about. We trade channels, right? We trade channels to the long side, we trade channels to the downside, and it's all very, very important to me of what happens next. So now it happens three, three days from now of what happens tomorrow. And all my research is based on the next trading day. And if you look at the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, you'll notice one thing. Good news is we reclaim the 50. The bad news is it's not going to be now, well, now we reclaim the 50-day moving average. Anybody who short the market over the weekend is dead. It doesn't quite work that way. Just because if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, you'll notice a whole bunch of trees in the forest. And for all you guys who know what I'm talking about, these are supply zones. You still have the 10-day moving average. You still have uh, you still have the 200-day moving average. Uh, you have the 150-day moving average. You have all these trees that the market needs to come down. And if you look at a lot of charts, you're not going to turn around and say, well, that's it. This is a bull market. Let's buy stocks again. Am I, am I bull biased uh, going into Monday? I am. Yes, I am. This is probably the first time uh, I am buy biased. Or I want to use the word buy biased instead of bull biased. Uh, but this is the first day going into Monday session that I am slightly, right, 
uh, by bias going into Monday's session, just because we did reclaim uh, the 50-day moving average. If you look at the Russell, right, this was like one day away from really falling over. And they reclaimed, you know, the five and they reclaimed the 10. So this is bullish as well. If you look at the, if you look at the diamonds, right, you look at the Dow, it reclaimed the five-day moving average. That's bullish. And the SPY as well reclaimed the same major level. So everything is lining up for us on the buy side, okay, of Monday session. But this is where you start putting in the work. This is where you start breaking down uh, stocks. You start breaking down charts and seeing where are the cleanest patterns. So the good news is we reclaim. Here's the, I don't want to use the word bad news, but here is the more not, not as good news, right? If you look at charts, especially for the NASDAQ 100 this morning or this weekend, you'll see a lot of similarities. Stocks still don't look great, right? So if you look at Tesla's chart, although again, it reclaimed the 200 day moving average, okay, it still hasn't even taken out the previous day's high. When you look at Amazon's chart, right? Okay, Amazon reclaimed, right? We're about to reclaim the 50-day moving average, kind of mirroring the cues, but it still didn't reclaim the previous day's high. If it does, that's cool, right? If it does, that's cool, but don't expect like you had a 300-point move here, right? Just because you had no supply zones, right? You had this really, really big move. The first time reclaimed the 50-day moving average, you'd run on a three, 400-point run in a week and a half. You're not gonna get the same thing on Monday, even though the 50 day got reclaimed the same way the 50 day got reclaimed here, the difference is here is no supply on the way up, and here you have supply zone after supply zone after supply zone after supply zone. Same thing with NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA went on this massive move here when it reclaimed the 50 day moving average the first time. Again, the reason why it had no supply until it hit its linear regression line. So you had a move from 540 all the way to 614 before there was any type of supply. This time around, it reclaimed the 50-day moving average. But again, look how much supply you have in front of you, right? You have the 10, you have the 20, on and on and on. So you're going to run into a lot of names that it did exactly the same thing as they did from March the 31st or, or, or towards end of March. The only difference is this was clean coming out of a big macro channel versus a reclaim, a remount that it now needs a lot of work. So even though you're going to see, if everything goes well, you're going to see upside bias in the indexes. Remember, the indexes still have to pull everything up. So if you guys remember, the Qs rallied first, right? The Qs broke out first above this 324, 325 level first. And then everything started going up with it. NVIDIA, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, on and on and on. But this time around, even though we did reclaim the 50-day moving average, don't think for a second, unless we get really big gaps, unless we turn around and you're watching this video uh, Saturday night or Sunday night and you see the futures rally, you know, 250 points Sunday night, you know, obviously it's a whole different conversation. But again, you can't assume we're going to rally 250 points in the Dow and 100 points in the Nasdaq. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. So even though I am buy buys going into Monday, just remember when you are looking at charts this weekend, just understand there's plenty of supply zones above them. So for Amazon to be good, like really, really good, and even though if it, it can reclaim this channel here and start making its way up, you know, $10 here, $6 here, for Amazon to really have a clear channel, a really big clear pocket, it's going to need to reclaim like 3370, right? Or at least a close, excuse me, not even 3370, maybe a close above what, 3330, right? For me to be clean, right? You see a clean pocket, 3330 all the way to 3500. For Tesla, and again, Tesla did a good job. For me to get excited about Tesla or at least have a, a viable trade on Tesla, at least it's going to need to clear out the five-day moving average, maybe to get to 620 and then maybe to get to 630. There were some good aggressive uh, late-day call buyers coming in on Tesla along with everything else towards the end of the day. Uh, so would it shock me to take out, you know, for Tesla to take out some levels uh, Monday or Tuesday and finally kind of wake up? No, it wouldn't shock me. Uh, there are some clean charts out there, right? If you look at technology, like Facebook is clean. You can see Facebook is clean. This is the first day uh, above the 10-day moving average. And if it reclaims this level, then yeah, you could see that you know Facebook does have room all the way back uh, to this 330 level, right? It looks very, very clean. If you look at Microsoft, right, going into this weekend, you know, again, it did a great job for the last couple of days. It's got rejected into uh, this supply zone here, right? The 20-day supply. And look at the last time when it got rejected at the 20-day supply, it came right back in. So it closed 
at the 20 days. So for Microsoft to wake up for this week, it has to reclaim Friday's levels, and then you can get a move uh, maybe into the 250. So even though we reclaimed levels, and especially on the queues, just we understand we're not out of the woods just yet. I think it's a great first start, right? If you, you know, again, if you've been watching these videos, I've been really sell biased for the last like three weeks, especially uh, when you see these stocks just couldn't rally on earnings, couldn't rally on upgrades. This is the first time that I am buy biased, right? I am buy biased. Uh, going into this week, I do believe uh, the market needs a little bit of work. Okay, I do believe that. I do believe they need a little bit of work, and it's not going to be just kind of a linear line uh, into success. But I think it's a really, really good uh, first start. So here's some names that that did, did look good, right? Uh, Facebook, I like. It's probably the cleanest name. Uh, out of all the beta names, again, if it starts reclaiming, maybe you could get a move to the 330s. Uh, look at look at even Peloton. Peloton has so much bad news. I, I feel like got hit within that last couple of, you know, last three, four days. It's been resilient. And the last bit of news was there's some sort of probe on Friday. There's some sort of probe uh, into um, something, something other than Peloton and Lulu. Who the hell knows? But it did a good job, right? And it kind of brushed the brush the news and now it's kind of starting to move up here first close over supply so if peloton can get above this channel who knows maybe you can get a move back to this 104 105 level right it looks really good even names like uh funko have nothing to do with beta right you got a nice little channel here had really really good move uh consolidated for like five six days and if it starts getting above this channel maybe it can run up as well uh, a name like prmw that i really don't you know really don't know about but look how long this channel was, and it finally got above it on Friday. Uh, even the vaccine names, right? Like Moderna still needs a little bit of work, but you can see at least it's now back to the 10-day moving average. Again, yes, macro is going to need to reclaim this 169, 170, but at least you can see that it's getting above these channels or trying to get above these channels to start waking back up again. So if you are going into uh, this weekend bull bias, uh, just like I am, and again, I am slightly bull biased. I am uh, sell bias this weekend. But again, I'm, I know we're not out of the woods yet. I know even though we could see some indexes strength uh, Monday, Tuesday, it's still going to need a couple of days for these stocks to kind of catch up to everything. So guys, that's it. Have a great, wonderful weekend. Sometimes technical analysis is very advanced. Sometimes there is a healthy, good, healthy discussion between the bulls and the bears. For right now, on the surface, the Qs did reclaim back the 50-day moving average that's a thumbs up. Is it an alternate green light to be determined? Guys, God bless. Have a great weekend and I'll see you all. Monday.